China's latest sea trial of the Fujian aircraft carrier isn't just another military test, it's a defining moment in naval warfare. This is China's most advanced carrier yet, a technological powerhouse with electromagnetic catapults and bold ambitions. But why does this trial matter? What was spotted on deck that got analysts buzzing? And more importantly, how close is Fujian to becoming fully operational? In this video, we're unpacking the Fujian 7th Sea Trial, what it all means for the global balance of power at sea, and the big strategic picture you need to see coming. Let's start with what just happened. Maritime traffic around the Yangtze River estuary was restricted, something that has, over the past year, quietly become code for the Fujin is moving. Although no official name was attached to the restriction, its familiar wording tipped off military watchers that the Fujin was heading out again for the seventh time. That alone is big news. Why? Because sea trials are essentially dress rehearsals. Every voyage tests different aspects of the ship's systems, mobility, navigation, communication, flight deck operations, and more. And the more trials you rack up, the closer you get to curtain call, official commissioning into the fleet. This seventh trial, however, came with something new, visual evidence of aircraft on deck, spotted via satellite and confirmed by Chinese military sources. One was clearly the KJ-600, China's new carrier-based early warning aircraft. But the real shock came from a second aircraft that looked nearly identical, except for one missing detail, the iconic radar dome. No radome, no early warning. So what was it? Many defense analysts believe this mystery plane could be the prototype for a carrier-based transport aircraft, China's version of the U.S. Navy C-2 Greyhound. If that's true, it's a major step towards self-sufficient carrier operations. Carriers aren't just about launching fighter jets. They need to move parts, personnel, and supplies fast, and until now, China hasn't had a platform for that kind of mission. So this trial wasn't just about proving Fujin can float, or even fly, it hinted at a fully integrated carrier ecosystem in the making. And that, more than anything, signals Fujin is moving into the final phase before active duty. Now that we've seen what went down, let's dive into what makes Fujin so revolutionary in the first place. Let's talk about why the Fujin isn't just another big ship with jets on top. This carrier is a technological leap forward for China, and possibly a disruptor in global naval power. First and foremost, electromagnetic catapults. While the U.S. Navy's Gerald R. Ford class was the first to use this system, China's Fujin is the first non-U.S. carrier to deploy it. Compared to the traditional steam catapults used on older carriers, electromagnetic launch systems are faster, more precise, and gentler on the aircraft. That means more launches, less stress on airframes, and higher sortie rates, especially critical during sustained operations. This changes everything about how China can deploy air power from the sea. Instead of being limited to light, short-range fighters, the Fujin can now launch heavier, more capable aircraft, like the KJ-600 Early Warning Platform. It's a direct answer to the U.S. Navy's E-2D Hawkeye, and it massively extends radar coverage for the battle group. What's equally fascinating is how the Fujin was designed from scratch to use these systems. Unlike the Liaoning and Shandong, both adaptations of older Soviet hulls, the Fujin is indigenous, purpose-built by Chinese engineers with lessons learned from previous carriers and an eye toward the future. This isn't just symbolic. It reflects China's growing ability to build next-gen military hardware without foreign help, a key goal of their long-term defense strategy. And the technology doesn't stop at aircraft launch. Reports suggest advanced arresting gear is also in place, capable of recovering large aircraft with pinpoint control. Combine that with integrated combat systems, digital command interfaces, and potentially even unmanned aircraft in the future, and the Fujin becomes more than a ship, it's a floating high-tech military hub. Now imagine this platform in full operational mode. That's where we turn next, what this means not just for China, but for everyone else keeping a close eye on the Indo-Pacific. But the real question is, how soon will the Fujin be fully combat ready? While sea trials are underway, integrating new technologies like electromagnetic catapults and advanced arresting gear takes time. Pilot training, carrier operations, and doctrine adjustments all play a role in determining how quickly China can field a truly operational carrier strike group. However, if successful, the Fujin could mark a turning point, not just in China's naval strategy, but in the balance of power across the Indo-Pacific.
The Fujin is not sailing in a vacuum. It's part of a much bigger picture, and it's sending ripples across strategic waters, especially in the Indo-Pacific. Let's not mince words. China is rapidly modernizing its navy, and the Fujin represents a clear shift in doctrine. While the Liaoning and Shandong helped China learn carrier ops and power projection, the Fujin is designed to compete, not just participate. Why does that matter? Because control of the sea is no longer just about battleships and submarines. It's about who can control the air above the sea. A carrier like Fujin, with its integrated catapult system, KJ-600s, and potential logistics support aircraft, allows for a sustained, flexible, and far-reaching strike capability. This gives China the ability to conduct real blue water operations, not just in its backyard, but across the open ocean. We're talking sustained patrols in the Indian Ocean, power projection near Taiwan, or even humanitarian missions in Africa or Latin America. With carriers like the Fujin, China can now respond to crises, deter adversaries, or influence trade routes with a level of mobility and firepower that simply wasn't possible before. Add to that the symbolic power of such a carrier. The presence of a ship like the Fujin in contested waters doesn't just serve military goals, it sends a political message, loud and clear. It's a floating flag of influence, broadcasting China's readiness to play a leading role on the global stage. What's even more telling is that China is experimenting with the dual role concept, pairing surveillance and logistics to enhance operational tempo. Think of it like a Formula One pit crew working in tandem with the race team. The early warning aircraft gives you eyes far beyond the horizon, while the transport aircraft keeps the mission supplied and agile. That kind of flexibility is key in modern carrier doctrine. It mirrors US Navy thinking, where multi-role capabilities are prized, but now, China is adopting the same playbook, with its own twist. So what's the takeaway? The Seventh Sea Trial didn't just confirm that the Fujin works. It confirmed that China is shaping its future naval strategy, and it's doing so with confidence, speed, and serious technological power. The Fujin's Seventh Sea Trial was more than a technical milestone. It was a strategic message. A message that says, China is ready. Ready to launch bigger missions, carry more advanced aircraft, and take on a larger role in global naval dynamics. From electromagnetic catapults to potential logistics aircraft, we're witnessing the emergence of a next-gen carrier force. Not theoretical, not years away, now. And that changes the balance of power in real, measurable ways. As the Fujin approaches commissioning, the world's navies are watching. And if you followed this video to the end, now you know why. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.